today's video, what we're going to be discussing are MIs, also known as myocardial infarction. So whenever we're talking about MIs or myocardial infarction, I like to break it down like this. It helps it make sense. Myo, meaning muscle. Cardial, referring to the heart itself. So we're talking about the heart muscle, and we're talking about an infarction, which is permanent cell death. Click the link below or visit nursing.com slash NFN for a free NCLEX ebook covering the 77 key topics. Now, MIs are the result of a lot of various different factors, right? We're talking about prolonged hypertension, prolonged constriction of these vessels that feed blood into the heart, as well as the deposition of atherosclerotic plaque in the heart, right? Which eventually leads to a blocked artery. I like to think about this nice pool, this nice pond at the end of this river. And let's imagine we've got these little fat beavers, right? I like to think about them like little fatty beavers coming in and building a dam. They're slowly building a dam and they're slowly depositing fat across this river. Now, what's going to happen? Imagine that this pond here is the heart. Okay, this is where all this flow is going. And this is one of our coronary vessels. These little fat beavers are depositing this atherosclerotic plaque across this river. And what's going to happen over time, eventually, if this river completely gets blocked off and that dam gets built, we're going to lose flow through that coronary artery to that heart. And this is what ends up resulting in a myocardial infarction, a complete loss of blood flow to an area of that myocardium. So what are we going to use? What kind of medications or treatment modalities are we going to use for patients with MIs? You're going to see pharmacologically speaking, antiplatelets being given, such as aspirin to prevent further platelet aggregation to that clot within that coronary vessel. Also anticoagulants such as IV heparin. Again, these are medications we see all the time in the CVICU. We would give IV heparin to try and lubricate and maintain patency of that coronary vessel. You would also see vasodilatory agents being given such as nitroglycerin or morphine. Again, the overall idea, we have a blocked coronary artery. It's blocked, it's very narrow and it's hard for blood to pass through. If we can dilate that vessel, then we can allow more flow through that vessel to the heart. We're also going to treat chest pain, right? We mentioned morphine. It's not only a coronary vasodilator, but of course we know it helps treat pain. Now, the last two bullet points here are PCI, percutaneous coronary intervention, as well as a cabbage, coronary artery bypass graft. These are actual surgical interventions, invasive interventions, I should say, used to treat MIs. We see PCI all the time where I work at. Basically, they go in threading a small catheter, up through the groin or through the arm, up into the coronary vessel itself. They're able to inflate a balloon within that vessel, which basically squishes all of that fatty beaver deposit <laughs> up against the vessel wall. It squishes it up against the vessel wall, and then they deploy a stent, as we can see in this image, to keep that vessel open and maintain patency of that vessel. If PCI is unsuccessful, then you could move to a more invasive surgical option, such as cabbages, coronary artery bypass graft, where they actually split open the sternum, go in and mechanically uh, take vessels, usually veins from the legs, saphenous veins, and they graft them directly onto this diseased artery to restore blood flow to that damaged heart. If you need more help breaking down complex topics like this one, make sure to head over to nursing.com slash NFN Click the link in the description below or scan the QR code to unlock your free NCLEX review that covers 77 must-know nursing topics. Make sure that you learn this, that we love you guys. Now go out, be your best self today, and as always, happy nursing.